So welcome back to another Impact Sessions with me, Nick Bramley. Today we're talking about from light bulb to life skills. It's a young enterprise business journey, and it's a real first for the Impact Sessions. We've had two guests on before, but today we've got seven. And today we're interviewing and meeting the St. Peter's School York Young Enterprise team. We're going to talk about developing a product called Caring Through Cooking. So I'm hoping this is going to go well. I'm hoping it's not going to be carnage. And in addition to the team, we've also got Paul Lillywhite, the Young Enterprise Advisor, and we've got one of their teachers, Mr. Sheehan. So um, Mr. Shred, in fact, I'll get your name right, Mr. Shred. So without further ado, um, welcome, Paul, first of all, who set this up. Paul um, has been a guest on the podcast before, so he knows what we're all about. But uh, he approached me recently because he's working with the students at um, St. Peter's in York, and he was blown away by some of the work they're doing in terms of this young enterprise project and, and what it's doing and how it's working. Um, so when he said to me, I've got a business I'd like to introduce you to, I was expecting old, grey, whatever, and not young, vibrant, lively, uh, lower sixth and year 11 students. But hey, Paul was blown away with you. Let's see if you can blow the audience away. So welcome to all of you. Welcome to the Impact Sessions podcast. I'm going to start with Paul. So Paul, before we get to the students, Young Enterprise, what's that about? And what's your involvement with the Young Enterprise sort of mentoring side of things? Yeah, indeed. Hi, Nick. Pleased to meet you again. Um, in, in terms of Young Enterprise, I set up my own business about two years ago now, coming up 20 odd months. And one of the first thing I did was get connected to the FSB, mm -hmm. um, Federation of Small Businesses. And probably at my first meeting, they were looking for volunteers to get involved with Young Enterprise. And it's a fabulous initiative. I hadn't heard of it before. Um, so I, I volunteered and this is the second year I've been doing it. It basically allows students to set up and run a business. They set up a bank account, they put they all invest into the business, so they all put an initial cash sum into the business and buy shares, and then they run it. They set up a board of directors, they come up with the ideas and they run it as a business, and then it closes down at the end of the third term and any profits they've got, they pay out as dividends. So a little bit of it for them. Hopefully this year it's a little bit more than normal because uh, the team that we've got is, is a phenomenal team of, of young individuals. They're, they're great. Really, really fascinating. Very impressed. Excellent. Well, it's not just about the dividend, I guess. It's also a competition on a national basis and going through regional rounds and national rounds. So a little bit like The Apprentice, not being fired. It's being down to the last two or three and, uh, and and blowing them away so let's see if we can blow the audience away i'm going to start with lucy uh first of all lucy welcome to the podcast i'm sure you've not been a, a guest on a podcast before but i understand that the idea for the business was originally yours and that the business is called caring through cooking so what's the business all about and where did the light bulb or inspiration for it come from yeah so it all started in lockdown one so my granny was diagnosed with Alzheimer's about three years ago now, and she's always loved to cook. So I made a mini cookbook of her home recipes and simplified them down and added timings and stuff. So it was easier for her to do them and she could do them with my granddad or her carer. And then when I started St. Peter's in September and we started Young Enterprise, it seemed like an idea that all of us liked and we could carry on and hopefully other patients could do it with their carers. What an absolutely fantastic idea. What I would say is in business, some of the best ideas are the most simple ones. And you had a something in front of you that just needed refining and maybe just thinking through in a little bit more detail. Were you able to cook with your nan at some stages during sort of lockdowns and non-lockdowns and the, the periods where we were sort of slightly tiered and things? Did, that, did you get the chance to try out your recipes that you were working on with your nan at the same time as well? She lives quite far away, so it's always been over Zoom or FaceTime, which was kind of quite suitable for the current climate of COVID. It kind of all worked virtually as well. But I definitely got to speak to her about it. And she was, for what she understood of it, she was very supportive. Excellent. So when you did it, you weren't thinking, you know, young enterprise or business idea or light bulb or anything. You were just thinking, I'm going to do something nice for me, Nan, and, and you know, and, 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 and my granddad and care and things. 
Yeah, I've been a part-time carer for my grand for about two years, so I know how hard it can be being there all the time and just doing an activity that she can get involved with and not feel so left out. So I thought it was something that my granddad really to keep him sane during lockdown just as much as my granny. And it's I know a lot of things that a lot of things that carers can relate to is that. So something you could do for other people too. Excellent. And is it simplicity is the key, is it? I guess the recipes are simple and they're easy to use and you know the 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 they're not too complex, etc. Yeah, and we made sure any kind of danger points or anywhere where they could harm themselves was highlighted. So it's often common to forget just simple things like the oven will be hot or hot water could be a risk. Mm. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you for your, first of all, for the idea. I'm going to go to Melissa next, because I understand that with yourself, Lucy, Melissa is the joint managing director of the business. And, and you know, whilst the original idea came from Lucy, then evolved into this young enterprise business when you came back in September. Um, what's been the process or journey to get that idea up and running? And how did you go about setting things up? Yeah, so we started with Lucy's great idea about the cookbook and we started with market research and gathering different opinions on what recipes might want to be included in the book. And then we looked into more of the science behind how cooking can help the Alzheimer's and different diseases. And then we moved on with our cooking team to test these recipes in the kitchen and specialise them, as Lucy said, to help eliminate all dangers and specialise them to each digression of the disease. So they are sort of the look at different progressions and different capabilities, you know, early stage and different stages, making the cooking accessible for as long as possible. While sadly, you know, people are going through this dreadful sort of uh, journey, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. OK, I'm going to come to the cooking guys later. We've got two of the guys on here who I understand are your sort of mad chefs in the kitchen, but we'll we'll come to that. Um how, how did you decide the roles? Because we've got on here, one, two, three, four, five, six of you. I understand there's 20 odd people in the business and there's a board of directors of about 10. How did you go about setting that up, Melissa? What was the process, you know? Yes, yeah, so we have quite a large group and I think that's a great thing because we have so many more ideas and people helping. So we started by, in one of our very first meetings, each of us stood up and presented like a small speech about the position we wanted and why we thought we could represent that position best. And then we voted anonymously and we came to a decision as a group with these positions. Wow, I'm thinking of Paul. How many businesses have we been in, Paul, where that would be really, really useful to do that? Um, I like the idea of pitching for what you're interested in and pitching where your skill sets might be. Was there any difficulties, you know, with three people wanting to be head of sales or marketing or whatever, or with the friction to deal with? There's 20 odd people. It can't be easy. There has been a few disagreements, but I think this is probably the best way we've come about doing a little speech and then each of us just voting on who we think best represented that role. Well, welcome to the world of business. At the end of the day, it's about making decisions and getting things done. And uh, I have to say my involvement with all of you prior to setting this up has been really impressive. And I think that's why Paul suggested that we do this podcast, really. Uh, Lucy, I'm going to come back to you. Um, how does it look from a business point of view, from your original idea? You know, how pleased are you with the progress? Um, you've launched, developed a range of products since inception. It, has it grown arms and legs, this thing? And does it look better or different to what you anticipated when you said that initial light bulb in first lockdown? Yeah, I think massively because so many people have come on board with it and so many people have said how they can relate to it and how many people have had family members who have suffered and we've done a lot in the community and just as a social enterprise trying to change the way that society reacts to the disease. I think that's had a huge effect, but also how many books we've sold and I think it's just a lot bigger than I ever could have anticipated when I made a small one for my granny, for sure. So can I just ask the principal, we'll come on to the sales later. I don't want to steal the thunder of, of uh, uh, I think Natasha's in charge of sales. So I don't want to steal her thunder in terms of numbers and things. You actually created a book yourself, sort of like, a, was it in a binder format when you did it originally, uh, going back to the first lockdown? How did the original prototype look then, Lucy? Yeah, so for my granny, it was just a printout that I stapled together. It wasn't anything really formal, but for now, our like our physical copy is a binder, so it's got um, white proof pages, so it's easy for cooking with. Excellent. Okay, so it's looking 
very professional from a starting point of just an idea into you know what the the product looks like so uh, i'm going to come to alex next um alex you're responsible for marketing i believe so no real pressure there at the end of the day if you don't get the marketing and the sales right it might be the best idea in the world but you're not going to make any money um so what is the current customer offer from caring through cooking so it's more than a book, isn't it? There's more to it than that. Talk me through a little bit about what caring through cooking looks like as a as a product range and, a, and a, from a marketing point of view. What can I get at? Um, well, the the main product that we have is obviously the book, mm -hmm. but we're also planning on releasing audio and ebook versions because some people might prefer that, or it's more accessible, especially especially at the moment. Mm -hmm. And the the books also have um, videos uh, that you can access through a QR code, which you can uh, they can watch to help the system of cooking. So if I've got the book in front of me and I, I understand the ingredients, I'm not really sure how to throw them all together. I can use the book at the same time as using a QR code video and watch. I'm, I'm assuming it's Harry and Joe, you know, uh, messing up in a walk or something. I don't know what they're doing, but we'll come to their cooking skills later. Uh, I can watch that and follow the steps on that basis then, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Wow, okay. I mean, so far, this is exceptional, really. No wonder, you know, Paul was excited about it. Um, in terms of access to buying the products then, I'm going to share later on, and I'll share on the on the, the, uh, the audio notes for, for whichever platform they go out on you. You've got an Instagram page and you've got a book. How many books have you got in stock? And how would I get at one? Um, um, well, to get the books, you go on the Young Enterprise website, the marketplace, because as it is actually a competition, um, the rules state that to try and make it as fair as possible, the books have to be sold on the website. Okay. Um, as of right now, I'm not 100% sure on the stock of the mm -hmm. books. I haven't checked very recently but we've got enough to, to go out for what we expect to be selling. Well, let's hope this podcast means you need a second print run. Let's fingers crossed that we can help you with that. So uh, okay. that's fantastic. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate that. So um, how about building the brand? I'm going to follow up with that, Alex, really, in terms of building the brand and the product range and the marketing momentum. How did that get decided? Obviously, you got the name but there's more to it than that. How did the whole branding piece come about? Whether that's your logo, your color scheme, your impact pieces, your what you stand for. What have you done around that, Alex? Um, well, although I'm the, I'm the head of marketing, there's I have quite a few people who work with me. And we started, obviously, with the name. And then we went on to the logo. Uh, and we wanted to try and make that as simple and memorable as possible because we so we sampled lots of other logos and we made a original uh, logo and then we would we sampled it with the rest of the group and then we just developed that and then once we had all the groundwork down we started to try and develop an online presence because that's the in, that's one of the main ways of marketing these days and it's also one of the easiest to do and then um, we started to work with Alzheimer's Research UK and uh, they helped us to get into the York Press. And that's, that was one of the main uh, accomplishments we've got so far in the marketing department anyway. OK, thank you for that. I think it's fair to say there's a good team effort going on there. And, you know, that's not, not dissimilar to working in any business environment. I quite like the word we there, Alex. So thank you for sharing the credit with some of your team. Just go back on there for me. Thank you. And um, so basically, you've done market research, you've done feedback, you've looked at working with the, the organisation that is the leading light in the Alzheimer's sort of uh, area. So, so far, nothing on here that's not absolutely blowing away our audience in terms of the structure and the way that you've gone about this. Um, I'm going to come to my favourite role. So no pressure on you, Natasha, but my background is sales. I'm, a, I'm passionate about sales. I'm a sales professional. I do sales training, all that kind of stuff. Um, so no pressure on you, Natasha. But um, so what's been the sales plan and the sales strategy? So what have you, what, what, how did you go about creating a sales plan and a sales strategy to, you know, 
smash your sales targets. And by the way, if you know how many of you sold at the moment in terms of books, so you can unmute for me and come back to me on that one. So how many of you sold and what's the sales strategy? Um, well, currently at the moment, we've sold, I think, 42 books mm-hmm. um, and, well, and counting because um, lots of them haven't been like sent out yet. Um, and the stock, so our initial stock was 50, but I think I think we're definitely going for our second print order after this, uh, which could be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, originally, our sales strategy was to start small and to see like where we could actually take this product because we, we obviously we wanted it to be something amazing, but we weren't to start with. We weren't. We were a bit tentative as to if like the idea would work, if um, if social enterprise was the right way to go. But um, looking back, I'd say that definitely like oh, when we because everything we do is very democratic, so mm. it's a vote. Um, and after that vote, um, I don't know. I think I think everything picked up a bit because you could see that what we were doing was good and it was fulfilling a gap in the market and ultimately it was helping people and it was and this is where our slogan comes in bringing generations together because that's basically the whole concept of this cookbook and of all the products is to help people oh you see you work in sales natasha you smashed that absolutely blew me away with this clarity and the simplicity of that message so Thank you very much for that. I am going to go back to Melissa or Lucy. I'll go to Melissa first to unmute for me. Um, just to pick up on the social enterprise angle, um, how did you get to that decision? Because it's a it, it's a natural fit. It seems a natural fit to me, but you know it's it's quite a, a different approach to running a business. So how did the the group come up with the social enterprise uh, uh, structure for for the for the business? Yeah, I think as a group, as Natasha said, we like to make decisions democratically and we just felt it was the best fit because of Lucy's idea and how it helps different people and people that would usually not have a product aimed towards. It's definitely a gap in the market that we found as a team encompasses something that we feel strongly towards. Okay, thank you. I'm going to go back to Natasha again. Natasha, I was going to ask you about any deadlines that you've got. You know, the competition runs for a certain time scale. When do you have to? When do you have to have shifted your product by and got the money in so that it qualifies for the uh, for the competition? Well, I'm not sure when it is, but I think it's like maybe early June. I think, oh. or maybe slightly. Okay, plenty of time then. Okay. Well, early than that. But there's a lot of your products out there. Yeah, yeah, I know it's great. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay. So that means that we've been able to like grow our product, which has been great. Thank you very much. Well, June's a long time away. You're definitely going to need a second print run. And um, the the question I'm going to ask for, I guess, I'll go back to Alex because he used the word we quite a lot, was, you know, have you worked with others in the business to create sales opportunities, you know, in terms of sales funnels and working with each other? How does sales and marketing work together, Alex, in terms of getting the product right and then Alex and Natasha and her team getting the sales out? Um, well, obviously we're always talking because uh, marketing and sales go pretty closely, hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the main way that we've tried to work together is, well, at the moment, the main focus of marketing is just to try and expand the, the, the uh, amount of reach that we have. Mm. So at, at the moment, the sales and marketing, uh, sales isn't coming into play with the marketing too much because so we're not you're, got you're the, the early you're at the early stages i guess of working yeah exactly and sales are at the early stage of, of testing the marketplace and seeing what you can do so coming on a business podcast with quite a few listeners and viewers is probably not a bad route to market so um i don't know who persuaded paul or whether paul was uh, just doing it because he thinks it's a fantastic idea which it is but either way we'll hopefully help you to uh, to go to print run two three and four um i'm going to come to the two cooking stars i'm going to go to harry and joe but because of uh, the the sound issues i'm going to go to, to to harry first um i understand that you're both the social media faces of the business creating cooking videos and the like so harry before we go any further could you cook before you started this job unmute for me could you cook before you started this job um, well i'll be completely honest we are absolutely useless to be fair but it's it's sort of we've, yeah we've managed to grow and just develop it's been a great journey. I think um, 
as a team, we work very well together. Yeah, we, we were just really the faces of the operation. We've had a lot of help from uh, background staff and such. So yeah, before we're really useless, but I think we're getting slightly better. Do you think it's a bit endearing that you're not very good at cooking, though? I think that might be quite its charm, really, in some respects. It might yeah, be definitely. quite nice that, you know, you're trying something and, and you know, you, you're not professional chefs by any means. And, you know, you can make it work and turn it out and it looks a bit like the picture. Do you get your cooked food to look like the pictures that it's supposed to look like? That's the mark of cooking, Harry. If the picture looks the same as the what you put on the plate, you're not far off. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we did a decent job in the end. Um, some of the food was, well, mixed. But yeah, I think definitely the message is um, that really if we can do it, then I think pretty much anyone can do it. We've had a little bit of help, but that's the main message that we're trying to get across. Excellent. I like that. Examples. I'm going to ask Joe, can you mute for me, Harry? And I'm going to ask Joe then. So Joe, what's your cooking skills? What were they like beforehand? Are you, are you better than Harry? Let's make it competitive. Unmute for me. Are you competitive? With, are you better than Harry? I wouldn't say I'm better than Harry. I think we're on an even playing field, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. So both fairly you know, bang average at best and, and, and giving it a go. I, I, do like, I do like the ambition of that. Um, what's your favourite recipe, Joe, that you've done that you think I'm, you're quite proud of? That, oh, I can do that and it's easy. Um, well, personally, uh, when we actually did the recipes, the chicken Alfredo was absolutely delicious. That was amazing. Okay. But also, uh, for a Friday night, chicken Kiev and chips, you can't really go wrong, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that, that's fair. Except if it's Friday, it has to be curry in our house. But uh, do you want to oh. mute for me? I'm going to ask Harry what his favourite dish is. Harry, thank you. What's your favourite dish? I mean, chicken chicken Alfredo sounds fabulous. I don't know what that is, but it sounds nice. What, what's your favourite dish that you've cooked and, and, and served up? Well, I, I did enjoy the mac and cheese very much. That was scrumptious. But um, I think all of the meals were pretty much very well done, especially the background staff did a very good job making these meals. Mm -hmm. And I think they all um, turned out very well. I think the night of recording, it was so good. I had about four dinners that day. But this shows how good the meals were, really. Excellent. OK, thank you very much. Well, what I'm going to ask you is in terms of the I'm interested in this sort of demonstration stuff really because you've got the book then you've got the cooking demonstrations and you've got are they just videos that you can download i'll go to um i'll go to natasha on a sales point of view i buy the book and i'm okay with the book but I, i'm actually i'm a, I'm a visual learner what am i going to get access to to help me then is it is it is it help guide videos or is it live you know streaming how does it work um well so there's a qr code with every single um recipe and so you just like hold your phone over it and then it pops up um, and then Harry and Joe go through it step by step. Um, and I think there's definitely been some fab bloopers, which we've watched back. Okay. Um, but I think we might, we might have to put one of those on our website just so that everybody knows it's just, it does happen. Um, but on, no, uh, I, think, I think it's pretty much step by step and they're very easy and very simple. I really like the idea of that because it is one of those, isn't it? People who are not comfortable cooking need to know, you know, well, what do I do next and for how long and what goes in now and all that kind of thing. So it sounds like you've got that really nailed on, to be fair. Um, so I'm going to go to Melissa. Um, I understand there are over 20 students involved. Um, Communication is really important in business. So how do you keep people on board? How do you communicate? What channels have you got? What kind of platforms are you using in order to keep people on the same page? What are you doing? Yes, yeah, so every week, a small group of us come together and set an agenda for what our tasks are and things we want to progress for that week. And then our whole team, which is around 20, as you said, they come together and we just go through it step by step, allocating tasks and deciding who's doing what and how's the best way to do it. Okay, and these team meetings, are they remote or are they all because you, you're already at the school in terms of you know, social distancing, they're just all in a room and getting things done then, yeah? Yes, yeah, so this is our first week back at school, but over lockdown, we've had to be on Zoom and Microsoft Teams mm -hmm. and we found it best to increase our online presence during that. So that's where we thought of the audiobook and ebook. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, in terms of... It seems like little light bulbs come on and then they just take you on a journey, really. 
have we got the definitive product range right now in terms of the book and the cooking videos and the online presence? Is it still a work in progress or is this now we're ready, we're going out, we've sold 40 odd, you know, is it, is it just full on sales between now and the competition? I'm going to ask Natasha, sorry, because you're in charge of sales, Natasha. Is it full on sales between now and the competition? Well, we've just expanded. So we've just um, got the audio book and the ebook all ready to go. So we did this all over the last lockdown from home, um, which has been a really like, it's been an experience. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think, I think we'll decide that democratically. We've not had this conversation yet, but I think definitely it's, if someone, if someone comes up with something, it, it's definitely a possibility and we're not going to like shut down an idea. Mm. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to go back round one one more time each year. I'm going to go to Joe first, and I'm going to go to Harry. Um, what have you learned about yourself and your skills in business? I'm not so much bothered about your skills in the in the kitchen, Joe. Really, more about your skills in business. Um, what have you learned about yourself through this young enterprise process and, and launching this? Can be described as a fantastic sort of uh, product and concept. Yeah. Well, I think first of all. I've really learned that it's important to communicate in business. So like each part of the business, so communication is really key. So everyone's got that sort of clear goal and what's happening. But I think on a personal level, just throwing yourself in there for as much as you can. And also often for things to be successful, you just have to put time and effort in. It might be boring, it might be tedious. So like the audio book, for instance, I'd never done anything like that electronically in my life. Mm -hmm. And I set the task of making it. So I had to sort of learn it all myself. But once I got going, it was just putting the time and effort in and it comes out at the end. It's well worth it. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Does this sound like a proper business to me, Paul? It sounds very much as a, can you unmute for me, Paul, just a second. It sounds like everything that we teach our business contacts that we work with, you know, and th th these guys have got it nailed on from day one, haven't they? Absolutely. I mean, you, you said it earlier on, they, they, they blow you away. It's phenomenal what they've achieved in a relatively short space of time and in a lockdown. Mm. They're uh, incredible. Excellent. So, really impressive. I, I can see, and I, I, I totally understand. I'm going to go to Harry, then Alex. So Harry, first, what have you learned about yourself and, you know, being on the, the Young Enterprise journey and, uh, you know, how's it been for you? Well, I've never previously had much of an experience like this, so it's something new for me. And I've just come to realise sort of the sectors of a business and how we all work together and communicate. And I think it's really important that we are working with the right people. I mean, I've been lucky enough to work with the, the right people as well. And certainly through the cooking and the background staff. So, yeah, I think it's just the main thing is working with the right people, putting the effort in and, you know, communicating between your team. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to go to Alex. I'm going to go to Natasha. Alex, unmute for me. Alex, what have you learned on the the uh, caring through cooking journey about yourself, and what have you perhaps you had your eyes open to that but you you maybe you weren't aware of previously? Um, the main thing that I've learned is that I personally quite uh, enjoy the marketing aspect of business, and it's something that I would like to go uh, well to carry on with in the future. Uh, so. Caring through cooking, you know, it's helping me to decide a few trip and things like that. So it's really uh, opened my eyes as to what what I'd like to do with my life. Was that not on your radar before? Was that not something that was, you know, just on your thought process? Oh, marketing, business, whatever. Is that has that been a, a shift for you? It was it was on my radar, but it wasn't like uh, something that I knew that it was something I wanted to do. But since I've started caring through cooking and the young enterprise project i've decided that it's definitely something that i enjoy more than i've realized excellent well that's good to know and it does help to shape things and it's a it's a great industry by the way and there's always options and opportunities in that industry uh for for people who are who want to get stuck in and get creative and, and and you know throw themselves into it so i'm going to go to natasha and then melissa and i'll finish back with lucy so natasha what have you learned about yourself um what have you learned about business and through the process of doing the new enterprise and, and being my star, as in that you work in the sales team, no pressure. What have you learned? Um, I definitely think that like people, I've learned more about people, about interaction with people and the power of persuasion. 
definitely when it's come to sales and talking to I don't know all sorts of bookshops and magazines and stuff to see if like we can have that little window of yeah of, of where we can put some marketing in which is it's been it's been great because it means that I've, I've managed to like develop as like as myself as the brand has developed mm-hmm. and I think that's been a really really good so far so hopefully we'll go from strength to strength Excellent. There's more to come between now and the final. We'll come on to that in a second. Melissa and then Lucy. Melissa, how's it been for you? What have you learned? You're a joint MD, so there's a lot of people look to you, and I guess look to Lucy as well on that basis. How's it been for you in the on the, the overall sort of young enterprise journey? I think what I've learned most is the amount of work and hard work you put into your product. <laughs> you can really see. I'm just going to stop you there. That's a great answer. Just stop there. <laughs> I've learned it's damned hard work to run a business. You're right there. Now, I'm, I just I couldn't help to, to yeah carry on, Melissa. Sorry, I couldn't help for that. Yeah, of course. Um, when our first prototype came in and we got to see the physical representation of the work we put in, that was just a really great moment to kind of reinforce that we the team created something. Well, I didn't ask for this, and I don't know if anyone's got one to hand. And most people consume this uh, um, podcast on audio, so it might not work. Has anyone got a book in front of them to hold up to the camera? Has anyone got one? I should have asked, but never mind. We're going to share your Instagram page, and that's absolutely fine. My fault, my bad. But last but not least, Lucy, you had an idea. You were looking after your gran. You were looking to help her to maintain some self um, sort of involvement in in an important role in her life and this was going back almost a year I would imagine the first lockdown a year later what have you learned about the whole process and, and yourself on that journey then Lucy if you want to just unmute and respond to that one for me please I think definitely the same as Melissa it's a lot more hard work than you might anticipate but I think definitely if you were to think four months ago if any any of us were really to look at how far we've come, I don't think it would have been even a thought. So how much work, if we all put in together, all 20 of us, how much we can really achieve? Probably the biggest thing. Are you glad you had the idea? Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, really, really pleased for you on that one. What I would say to you is, you know, when Young Enterprise started and you are in a room and someone says, do you want to do this Young Enterprise thing? Were there other ideas on the table or did Lucy's idea just blow you away from the start? Um... I'll go to Harry. You know, if you're in that first meeting, the first, we've got this, we've got that, we've got the other. Was it always going to be Lucy's idea? I think that was certainly the, the main contender. I do remember trying to think of up some ideas, but once Lucy told us, we're pretty much all convinced from the start, really. I think it's a great idea for me. Excellent. That's always a good start for a business, by the way, is we know it's going to work, we're bought into it, and we're going to put the work in to make it and prove that we've, we're on the right track. So some fantastic lessons for, for real businesses listening to this. Um, favourite moment? Who wants to put the hand up and tell me their favourite moment? I quite like the idea of outtakes, by the way. That's for the celebration party when you win the national competition, which I'm going to come on to in a second. Um, outtakes and blooper reels. You cannot hide, they'll follow you for your life. So who's got a favorite moment that they'd like to share with us on the journey? Uh Harry, you put your hand up and then we'll go to we'll actually go to, to Mr. Shred after you, Harry. So Harry first, then Mr. Shred. What's your favorite moment, Harry? Uh, of course the cooking was great for, for us. But I think big moment was um we actually did sort of a carol singing service at a local um care home, which I thought was quite a nice thing to do. It's um just spreading the awareness of really and just bringing joy to local residents some of which who are, may have suffered from this disease and yeah i got got some few emails after that expressing that they appreciate it so that's quite a nice moment for us we are in the presence of greatness ladies and gentlemen what a lovely answer that is harry thank you for sharing that with us um are you any better at singing than cooking we'll leave that as a rhetorical don't answer the question don't worry about that uh mr shred what's your favorite moment on the uh, on the journey because you've been with them along the way if you want to unmute for me and let me know yeah well i was gonna agree with harry there and say that the carol service was fantastic that we did um although our singing we could definitely improve on but the the smiles were great at the end um just for me, the confidence the D6 have gained in the whole group is fantastic. I think um, at the start of the year, the, these guys 
weren't as confident. You've seen the real growth and they're really happy right now to say, okay, yeah, I'll come and do a podcast. Mm. Okay, the confidence and the real entrepreneurial spirit that everyone's starting to show here is fantastic. And I've been really impressed just in their growth over these six months. I think they're going to own a business or work a business in the future. So this is fantastic preparation for them. And I couldn't be more proud of the six months done so far. Excellent. What I would say to you, by the way, is care homes, a lot of people have got hearing problems. So you've probably got away with it a little bit when it came to the singing. So, um, you know, on, in that respect, you, you're probably winging it and you'd be OK. Last question for anyone. Are you going to win the national competition for Young Enterprise? Who wants to answer that? I'm going to go to Natasha. She works in sales. If she says no, then she's the wrong choice. Natasha, how confident are you going to win the competition? Well, I can't say I'm not very confident now. So we are definitely, we are giving it our best shot. We are putting everything into this. And you know what? I think I genuinely think that we've got a very good shot at this. Okay. So the people that you're competing with need to be aware and be aware of, 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 uh, of caring through cooking. Melissa, last quick question on the logistics then. I'm assuming there's some regional rounds, then the sort of national thing. Have you got any dates and times on that yet? Because it's all... Everything's up in the air, isn't it, with lockdown and returning to school and things. Have you got some definitive timescales on this? Yes. So next week we have our Dragon's Den presentation to mm -hmm. a team who's going to judge us and our presentation mm -hmm. on what our business is. Mm -hmm. And then over the next few months, dates should be decided on competitions because obviously trade fairs can't go ahead because of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And then when the competition comes to an end, we will see who's won. OK, well, you're in good hands with Mr. Lillywhite. He'll definitely share his expertise and knowledge in terms of supporting you and, and getting you fine-tuned for the competition. Um, I would just like to say, first of all, Paul, thank you for introducing me to the St. Peter's School York Young Enterprise team. Caring Through Cooking seems to be fantastic in terms of where it's come from, where it is now. And, and I'm delighted we've called this from light bulb to life skills, because as Mr. Shred said there, you know, the life skill development in the last six months has been fantastic. Um, for those who don't know, this podcast is available on all the usual podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, etc. It's on a YouTube channel for the Impact Sessions, and it's also hosted on our uh, website at uh, Impactus Group. Um, so you can find it anywhere. Just search Impact Sessions with Nick Bramley on your podcast platform of choice. And lastly, but not least, the contact details of those who watch this on YouTube are there for the school. Most importantly, their Instagram page, Caring Through Cooking, and they'll also be in the show notes for every one of the podcast platforms that we use. So it just remains for me to say, first of all, absolutely fantastic to meet you all. Secondly, congratulations on teaching a few people who are listening to this some really practical things about why don't we do that a bit more in our business and most importantly good luck to smash it out the park no pressure but i look forward to seeing and hearing from paul that you've won the national competition and you know what it's not all about winning but it is all about giving it your best shot and, and i think you're in brilliant hands for giving it your best shot hugely impressed with you all today thank you for being guests on the impact sessions podcast